Hey pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today I've got another garage review lined up for you guys of the Crusader Tier 5 British Light Tank. We haven't talked about this tank line at all up till now. Uh, it leads up to the fighting vehicle 4202 and this is the tier 5 tank it leads up to the Cromwell you get from the Covenanter which is very similar to this tank. Before we get stuck in I've just got something to announce to you guys and it isn't very good news. The problem is that I have to kind of do an exchange year or an exchange term actually from my school. You have to do it, it's not my choice but I have to do it so I'm not going to be here for a term so for a third of a year and that means I won't be able to do any video for that time. What I've done is I've produced a lot of videos in advance and I've asked my dad and he's agreed to upload a two week spot videos and one gameplay video every week. So you're getting one gameplay video, two week spot videos in a week. I'm gonna be home for Christmas so I've got three weeks of Christmas holidays then so I can make videos every day and so on so you've got something to look forward to but the problem is I can't do anything like I can't update you on any World of Tanks news or something like that because I haven't got any internet access and I can't make any new videos during that time so that means if there's a new patch or something like that you won't be getting any previews of me like you usually do you'll just get gameplay videos and weak spot videos and I hope you understand that I'm really sorry for this but it can't be helped and after that uh, I'm gonna be home again and I'm gonna make up for it with making a video every day for three weeks when I've got my Christmas holidays now that we've got that out of the way we can get stuck into the tank, the Crusader Tier 5 British Light Tank. And I just want to get something out of the way or another thing out of the way before we look at the stats and so on. That is why I really hate this tank. I've had an absolutely awful time driving it. It's, oh, it's been a nightmare and, and and that's kind of strange which I looked at this tank and I thought, hmm, well the stats are good. It kind of looks like a tank that I would enjoy playing but I didn't enjoy playing it. And one thing that I want to point out is this is the light tank. It's a tier five light tank, but it is not a scout. You might think tier five light tanks like the Chaffee, for example, are scouts. This one isn't. The maximum speed is 44 kph. It's got only 550 meters view range, uh, signal range. And the view range is not that amazing either. You cannot or you should not scout with this vehicle. And its gameplay is more similar to medium tanks, and I've heard a lot that it plays similar to the M7, American T5 medium tank, but I've never played the M7, so I can't really report on that or confirm that. What I can confirm is that it plays very, very similar to the T34, the Russian T5 medium. And that's kind of strange because I really, really liked playing the T34, or I still like it but I don't like playing the Crusader. The Crusader's got a lot of hit points for a tier 5 light tank, 450. That's average for a tier 5 medium tank, it's got exactly the same amount of hit points as the T-34 has, so that's quite a lot for a light tank. But you, I'm not really going to review this as a light tank, I'm going to review it as a medium tank because that's really what it is. It is very very light, it only weighs 20 tons. But it's got a fairly powerful engine, that means that this gets a power to weight ratio of 20.76, which is very, very good really. But it can only go 44 kph, but still, this tank will feel very agile, but it is not as fast as other light tanks are, and it feels more like a medium tank when you drive it. It can turn its hull at 40 degrees per second, which is very fast. But it hasn't got any armor whatsoever, so just forget about your armor. Well, your turret can pull off some miracle bounces once in a while, but you really should not rely on it because your armor just does not really exist. Your gun is a bit interesting, we'll have a look at that in separate. It's a 57mm gun, the same caliber that the T-34 uses. Uh, it fires 27.27 shots a minute, which is amazingly quick. That means that you've basically got a 2 second reload in between shots. That's insane. This tank's DPM is really, really good. Although the alpha damage is only 75 HP, combined with this rate of fire, that's amazing. Like, they're tier 1 vehicles that look at this rate of fire with envy. The penetration is not bad, but it's not good. It's kind of lower average, really, for tier 5. The penetration really can be a problem, especially if you're facing up against heavy tanks. As you'll be seeing in the gameplays, like, I've ha I have problems penning the side of a T1 heavy tank from 200 meters distance, so that's a real issue. The accuracy is pretty bad, 0.41, that's one of the worst accuracies in the game, and 2.3 seconds aiming time is not bad, but for its tier, it's not very good. So, all in all, 
the gun has not really got all that much going for it except for the amazing rate of fire but that's quite a big pro if you fire this gun it feels like you're firing an auto loader that never expires you just go on shooting 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 you never have to reload the, your clip it's that's really really fun and that's one of the amazing pros of this vehicle and see the turret traverse speed is 46 degrees per second which is very very good and uh, the view range is upper average for tier 5 but it is not scouting view range as well as for signal range the signal range is all right but it is not good for scouting so all in all this tank plays a lot like a medium a lot like the t-34 and if reports are to be believed a lot like the m7 one thing i forgot to mention for those of you guys who don't know this tank really existed in real life it was a very important tank in the british army it was the more or less the main tank really especially in the north africa uh, campaign in the early years and it was only replaced by the cromwell in 1942 but up till then this was the british stand standard tank of the north african campaign and it could actually face down panzer three and four tanks fairly reliably so when the tigers came in it kind of became a bit obsolete and it couldn't really do the job all that well so that that's why they introduced the the cromwell and why for why they also used m4 shermans which weren't all that great really either but for early stages of the war this was a very very fearsome tank um however it is not really in the game i've got two things going for you the first thing is but you've got amazing DPM. I fear I can't give you the DPM because it doesn't show up here because it's a light tank and I'm just too bloody lazy to work it out. But it's very, very good. It's one of the best DPMs, if not the best DPM at tier 5 probably. If you can catch your enemies out in the open with no cover and they're lightly armoured, you can just hammer them with your autoloader light reload speed. And that's especially useful if you're trying to combat light tanks or artillery because you can just really, really quickly take the health away with your rapid firing gun. And that's what this tank is very good at too, is taking out scouts and artillery. The other pro is that your light tank that plays like a medium tank with a pretty good gun really and decent maneuverability but the great thing that you've got as a lot going for you as a light tank is that you sustain 100% camo value even while on the move so that means a medium tank or a heavy tank or every other tank class in the game once they start their, up their engines and start moving around the place they lose their camo value not so the crusader because light tanks keep their entire camo value and that is very good and that means you can really use that to your advantage for example driving along behind the bush row or something like that on uh, Murovanka for example and you can really hammer your enemies and still sustain a lot of camo value so that's good you've got a very very low profile so that is a definite pro another advantage of this vehicle is that it's got very very good gun depression but that's the last good thing I've got to say about it because the armor's bar like one big problem is that your entire side is lined with ammo rack side uh, shots that penetrate in the center part of your sides but most of the time hit your ammo rack and damage that and that's a real death sentence for this vehicle because the only thing or one of the few things you've got going for you is the amazing rate of fire and if that's away by uh, the ammo rack damage then you've got a real big problem <laughs> that's why it might not be a bad idea to fit a wet ammo rack on this vehicle you could also get coated optics instead of wet ammo rack that's your choice but i'd probably prefer the wet ammo rack then you definitely also want to have the gld and the tank gun rammer because your aiming time on this gun is longer than your reload so the gld will really help and the 10 percent to loading time minus 10 percent to the loading time is always useful especially on dpm tanks i wouldn't uh, recommend vents of this vehicle as little as i would recommend brothers in arms just because this is a light tank with rapid firing gun and uh, good maneuverability and so on so all the numbers are pretty small and 5% to a small number is not ha does not have that big an effect so you will not really m realize the difference as you would on a tank destroyer or a piece of artillery or something like that so I wouldn't really recommend brothers in arms or improved vents now we're already on crew skills repairs would be a good idea on your entire crew your gunner who is also your loader should get safe storage because that's very useful i wouldn't really recommend six cents on your commander because you've got an accuracy of 0.41 on your gun so you 
usually fighting enemies at point blank range and if you are 10 meters distance to your enemy that like you don't have to be a genius to figure out that they've spotted you so sixth sense is not really all that important on your commander camo wouldn't be a bad idea on your entire crew however as i said i didn't have all that great experiences driving this vehicle but i've had one decent game and i want to show that to you this is the first and last game you're ever going to see of me and my crusader probably because I'm really looking forward to see the back of this vehicle, I really am. And this was the only game I ever had in this tank that I wouldn't have to be ashamed of showing to you. And that's why I picked it. And well, I hope this showcases for you how this tank's DPM can really eat up enemy vehicles if you set it to work correctly. But I've got real problems doing that. And uh, this tank just simply does not work for me. So. We're on Pearl River, one of my favourite maps actually, I really like this. And in this tank, this map's pretty good too because it favours medium tanks, agile tanks and so on. So I think this is going to be real good fun. But then again, I'm in my Crusader so it might not. Although I've kind of ruined it already, haven't I? Because <laughs> I already told you that I do alright. <laughs> So, T1 Heavy, and here you can see, like, we're at 440 meters range. That's quite a lot, actually. That's that's sniping range, really. And you can see we've got no chance whatsoever penning him. And with 0.41 accuracy, we shouldn't really be here. But, you know, just taking pot shots. And there's an SU-100Y spotted up there. One of the only two real enemy tier 6 tanks. <coughs> Sorry for that. I've also got a Hummel, and that is a really fearsome enemy because it's got, the SC 100 y has got this huge gun which can deal out 500 damage, so I have to be pretty careful because he can one-shot me. So right there you can see we bounced off the side of a T1 Heavy, and the T1 Heavy is infamous for having bad side armor, so, um, yeah. I mean, he's he's at range, but it's not that far range. That's 250 meters. We should be able to penetrate him, but we ricochet over time, and then the Churchill finishes him off. So KV1, if we can't penetrate the side armor of a T1, we don't even have to try with a KV1 because his tracks are going to eat up everything. Then just, but look at the reload time. Look at the rate of fire. That's amazing. Now, luckily for us, he's got the stock turret, and he turns aside to us, so we can penetrate him. We miss and he's finished off by the artillery so there's an m7 spotted above me a tank that's supposed to be the big brother of his vehicle here but i've never played it so i can't really judge and the sc100y spotted ahead again so let's see if we can get some shots at him and uh, just a pot shot didn't expect that one to hit aim 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 and yeah okay but that's a real problem you see the aiming time is longer than the reload the reload is insane but the aiming time is pretty bad and that's why you really have to play this tank front up and not at range because at range your accuracy and re aiming time is just not good enough and that will really kill your dpm because if you fully have to fully aim then that will make your dpm a lot worse because you can't shoot every time you've reloaded you have to aim completely first which will take you another half a second which can be quite decisive really in in a pinch so m7's ahead but the panzer 4 finishes him off which is fine with me because well I probably wouldn't have my i would have had to have, take three shots to finish him off it seems like the panzer 4 have a derp gun so i'm really afraid about su 100 y but we have a light tank or more like we have light tank that fits for all of the medium tanks so medium tanks are the tank destroyer killer so we should be able to actually win against him even if he's a tier 6 tank but we just have to be really really careful here because if he gets one shot at us you know we don't exist anymore so we'll have to be careful I know where he is XCM's telling me where he is with his speed I don't think he shifted a lot and yeah he sure hasn't he's still there but he's seen us and he's waiting for us to come around that corner there so I can't really push have to wait for Panzer Fall. The two of us should be able to finish him off, but maybe one of us will have to sacrifice. We've got support from that KV4, uh, KV1 back there too. Yeah, he. Uh, I think that was a Panzer Fall, maybe even. Oh yeah, now he's 
attention is turned towards ah oh, and he's fired he's fired okay now that's really good he's got an insanely long reload speed now uh, uh yeah so i should be and here you can see the dpm of his vehicle we just eat him up and kill him eventually so first kill and now i'm going to loop round down here to uh, oh no i actually go up the top hmm And the scores in our favour, but they've got still this KV-1S, he's got this really, really fearsome one two two millimeter gun, so we have to be careful here. We've still got our artillery, he seems to be a decent player, but I have to be careful. Okay, so there go two enemies spotted, and let's see if we can. Here you can see the great gun depression of this tank at work, and we get shots at the rear of M3 Lee. This is what this tank's really good at popping up behind enemies and just DPMing them to death. Matilda's next. Hello, Mr. Matilda. Take that. Now I have to go for slow glaciers. Glaciers again. See our gun depression's walking for us again. We miss him this time. Now the angle's too steep. I have to go for his up glaciers. But we can penetrate him easily and finish him off. So third kill. And now it seems like we will win this game because there's only the KV-1S and the artillery left. Uh, XVM's telling me that the KV-1S is over at D0. So I guess the RT is probably going to be at A7 or something like that. So I'm going to try to take the artillery out and then we can all cluster around to try to take off the KV-1S. So I'm rushing forwards here trying to get the RT before somebody else gets it. And oh my god the KV-1S oh shit 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 ah, and he kills us. Okay so <laughs> that, that gun's a bit troll but only a very very little bit. Now, the K1S considered to be a bit overpowered, so... Nice game with a bit of a depressing ending there, but, you know, that was the best game I ever had in my crusade, and it wasn't a very good game. I mean, it wasn't an alright game, but it was not amazing, and, um... Yeah, I hope that really showed you how this, the DPM can really work for you, and how you can really just spam enemies well they can just take one shot at you you can shoot three or four times so that's really nice and this tank really excels at killing artillery and scouts or likely armored targets because your penetration doesn't matter and that close range you can just really really take them apart with your good dpm so for some final words let's go back to the garage i'm sorry that i only had one game for you but it was the only game that was acceptable that i ever had in my cromwell so sorry for that but can't help it so uh yeah, I'm not sure if it's the fault of the tank or my fault or whatever, but I just suck at playing it and I cannot recommend it because I just had no fun in it. And I let's see if we look at the research, I'm only missing 2,300 experience to get the Cromwell. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting the Cromwell. I think that's going to be fun. Don't like the Crusader. Uh, if you like DPM vehicles, then you might like it. But I like DPM vehicles, and I didn't like the Chrome. I thought I'd like it, but I didn't. So if you're heading down the tank line, you'll have to play it anyway. Just make your own opinion on it. I don't like it, and you know, now I've got my opinion, and that's what that's what I feel like about this tank. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, consider giving it a thumbs up below. Consider subbing to my channel. And thanks for watching a lot. I hope I see you in one of my next videos. And bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>